Hello. So I have had a few people ask about everything that's going on with me, um, mainly because I've kind of kept everything that I've been doing under wraps. Um, but now that I guess I've started talking about it and talking about the process of becoming a living donor, um, I've had some people just ask me things about it. And so I figured it'd be a lot easier for me to make a video because I like making videos. Um, and that way I can kind of tell you guys about my story, how I met Jim, and the process that I've gone through in order to become a living donor. Um, but Jim and I, we met, well met, um, gosh, it had to have been, what's it, June? It had to have been March like early March I believe but I came across um, my friend she had put it in her Instagram story a screenshot that someone else had posted of somebody wearing a shirt that said need kidney um, I think oh donor please help and then a phone number under it and I can't I can't begin to describe the feeling that I got when I saw that it was like like I really really was like concerned I was like who is this man he's from Jacksonville I knew that um, Jacksonville is my hometown Jacksonville Florida and it just so I was very like very intrigued by it and but honestly just kinda kept scrolling you know the whole social media fashion just bloop 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 but later on that day I noticed that I was like still thinking about it um, giving something like this has always been something that I want to that I've wanted to do um, I'm on the the bone marrow transplant list um, never been called for that but I'm on it and you know it was just it, I just couldn't get off my mind I was you know just thinking about this guy thinking about I don't know just oh, my alarm went off I woke up early um, but I just, I couldn't stop thinking about him, you know, I didn't even know his name, I, I, he was just the kidney guy, and so I started doing a little bit of research, just, you know, like, what's life like after donating a kidney, you know, how does it affect your everyday life, how does it, you know, what are the repercussions, will it affect my lifestyle, hang on, let me turn my volume off, and, um, no, didn't see anything that really scared me, you know. I'm not a heavy drinker. Um, I I don't take a ton of ibuprofen, you know. It, I I just it, nothing deterred me. I was like, all right, I'm gonna do this. So I I don't remember if it was that night or the next night, but I I went to Jordan, my husband, and I was like, hey, think about donating a kidney, and he's like. To who? Who do you know that needs a kidney? And I'm like, his name's Jim. <laughs> and that, like, no, at that time I didn't even know his name. But that's kind of like my catchphrase now. I've been asked so many times, who, who's the recipient? It's Jim. <laughs> um, but anyway, so Jordan at first was like, I don't know. This is, you know, this is kind of, you know, this is a big deal. And, and... And I was fully aware of that, you know, I, I know, it, you're literally giving somebody an organ, you know, it's it's not just, you know, lending somebody some money, you know, it, it is a big deal, but um, after a little bit of time and, um, you know, and whatnot, uh, Jordan, he's a research nut, and he did his own research, and he kind of came to terms with it, and he he knows that I'm the kind of person that when I want to do some, I'm going to do some, and I appreciate it if you back me up, but if you don't, actually, but not in this situation, truly, if he'd have been like, babe, no, I'd have been like, all right, because that's one big component of donating that you have to realize is that you need support from your family. Um, it's just Jordan and I, we don't have kids, we have three dogs. Um, our families aren't, you know, super close. So, I mean, him and I, that's all we got here. And if he wouldn't have been on board, there's no way I could, I could do it, you know. Um, so, I called, or I told him about it. And then I called my dad. And I, my dad's somebody who I go to when I need very, like, unbiased, blunt advice. And I just said, hey, I think about doing this. And he was like, well, 
you know, here's some things you need to think about. Um, you know, and, and he talked to me, and, and he made really good points. You know, like, what if one day in the future Jordan needs a kidney, or one day, you know, your kids, or your mom, or your dad, me, you know, and he just pointed out all the things that you don't, I guess, really think about in the moment, you know, but, you know, I, I, this may sound bad, but it's like, I don't want to wait to do something good now because of a hypothetical situation that may never happen in the future. That's the way that I guess I've been thinking about this. Because if Jordan needs a kidney, he has a big family who loves him so much. And I just, I guess in my head, I'm just like, it'll be fine. That's all you have to think about. It'll be fine. You know, um, and I can only pray that if Jordan got in that situation, that somebody would step up like I am to help him like I am with Jim. So anyway, so... After I kind of got that from Dad, I decided to finally give the number on the shirt a call. And I had no clue what to say. Like, I was just sitting there, I was like, Hi, my name's Sarah. You guys still need a kidney? Like, I, it was the most awkward phone call I think I've ever had in my life. Um, but, and I could tell the hesitation, and I found out later on that they had a lot of people call them soliciting their kidney which is super illegal don't do that you can go to jail um you know or asking like well what's in it for me or you know x y and z and you know i told them that that wasn't the case it's not my intention you know i i just i want to see if i can help and and talk to jim i think that very first time i remember i was at work i was mucking stables and um sat there and talked to him for about 30 minutes he told me about the process he told me about you know the number to call to to get started at the Mayo Clinic in Florida um and so I was like all right so called the the transplant um advocate and told her I was interested and it started off with a survey which was just like a very intrusive survey about my lifestyle asked me about I mean lots of lifestyle questions family history questions and it's basically just to weed out you know like people like right off the bat you know like because some people just can't give you know and I don't know who those people are I guess maybe if you like put like you're addicted to meth they'll probably be like mm, maybe not um but you know it was just real honest sent it in and she got back to me about a day later and told me that you know I'm, I'm good for the first stage um and that she would send me tissue typing vials um, and this to me was the most difficult part um, so she sent me I believe it was five vials that I had to get filled up with blood to tissue type because it's it's a lot more in, um, involved than just um, like oh you're O, I'm O negative blood he's O negative blood you guys are perfect it's there's it I don't know what it is beyond that but it's more so I actually had a pretty hard time finding a clinic that would draw my blood um, the day that I did I ended up having to go to four different clinics because I was just getting the run around um, but I you know with having a hard time I called my transplant advocate and I was like listen what do I do <laughs> like I don't know if I had been working at my vet clinic that I work at now I just drawn it myself but um, you know I just it was very frustrating but I finally found a clinic who would do it um, I had to go all the way to um, a city over um, you know and have it done and, and got it mailed off and um, that took about I think it was two weeks and I was so anxious at that point because at that you know at that point I had called Jim when I got the blood vials and I was like hey I'm, on, I'm you know I'm, I'm to the next stage and and the relief that I heard in his voice, but yet the the hesitation because he didn't want to get too excited, like broke me. Like every time I talked to him, I just he you know he told me continuously, you can back out, you can back out, don't feel obligated, you don't have to you know I don't want to be all up in your business. And I was like, no, be in my business. Like I want to do this with you. And it was it was a really good feeling whenever you know. I would tell him, all right, Jim, I got the blood vial sent off. Now we just got to wait. And he would, like, he would literally start crying because he was, like, like, so thankful. And, and that, 
I can't explain the feeling that gives you because it's not it's not a like a oh I'm such a great person feeling it's like I'm helping this man live like period you know but at that point I didn't know that it was happening and so I got the tissue typing back we were a match so I called Jim told him we were a match and um you know and and he was excited and so I had to set up my appointment then to go down to Mayo because you have to do the transplant on the testing in the hospital in the host hospital which is in Florida so I currently live in Virginia so I went um, cleared it with my job so that's another important thing too is talk to your work about things because um, it, you know you're gonna need time off um, so the testing took about a week um, the initial Mayo testing which is also the first time that I got to meet Jim um, I didn't meet him until the day before I left, um, but I went, and you get so many tests, and if anything, um, if even if I wouldn't have been able to donate, the fact of how, like, um, all the, all the tests were awesome information for myself. I mean, they, I mean, all the things they look for in my blood. I found out I had mono before. I found out, and this actually gave me like a panic attack because um, I didn't understand. You have Hep A, B, and C. B and C are the bad ones, and A, just about everybody has Hep A. And I saw that I was Hep A positive, and I was like, <gasps> like I was, I freaked out because I didn't know what that meant. So I like grabbed the first RN I saw, and I was like, what does this mean? Cause they have a really handy app and you can just look at everything but I mean I learned about you know how, what's going on with my pee I got a full body or a abdomen pelvic CT scan which is really cool um, I got radiographs in my chest uh, I mean all kinds of like stuff um, you know so that itself is awesome um, and actually one thing that it's kind of unique to Jim's story is that he also had somebody before me who tried to donate to him and he started going through the donor process and he actually found out he had kidney cancer um, caught it very early I'm assuming um, because it was just a spot on his kidney but you know it's probably saved his life um, you know going in for that testing so in the back of my head I, I was just worried you know like am I gonna get kidney cancer you know or not get but have or um, but I also found out that even if I was 100% healthy across the board, there's anatomical things that can also make it to where you can't donate, such as um, if you have too many arteries in, you know, going to and from your, not to and from, but to your kidneys. I um, don't know, arteries go away from the heart. Yeah, so to your kidneys. Um, but I got lucky. I was in the 60 percentile that had a decent amount. Um, <clears throat> and and I was a match you know and and so I found out Friday afternoon that I was good um, I had to I, oh yeah and they also do like a psyche valve um, I had I went and talked to a genetics counselor um, because I do have cancer in my family but my mom did her genetic testing when she had breast cancer and she was negative for or not negative but like had normal markers in all of her DNA so they weren't worried about that with me but, <clears throat> yeah, so, I mean, the whole kit and caboodle. Make sure you're good top to bottom. Um, so, anyway, so I found out Friday. I got an unofficial, like, you're good. And I was so excited to tell Jim. Um, and I actually found this out later um, that he actually, in his head, thought that I'd got denied because they had canceled an appointment for me for my colonoscopy and my genetics because they didn't feel that it was necessary. Um... But he didn't know that was because my mom's genetic testing. So, um, so I got to his house and hang on, let me take a sip of water. So I got to his house and his whole family was there. And like he he looked a lot different than I imagined him. Like I knew what his face looked like, but it was just one of those things where you can tell that he's his body's been through a lot with because he was on daily dialysis um i mean it's hard for him you know and and it was evident you know and and 
just like the, the warmth of their family coming in. You know, whether I, they didn't know at that time I could donate, but whether or not I could or not was was unreal. You know, and, and I gave Jim a hug, and he started crying immediately. And, you know, it, it was just one of those things where it's like, there's no way that this could be the wrong thing. You know, like, all risks go out the window. I mean, they're very small, but it doesn't matter. You know, it, it just, just seeing the gratitude of the fact that, that he showed me for even just trying was, I, it, you, you can't, you can't verbalize that. You can't, it's just a feeling, you know, and, and, you know, but now I was so excited to tell him that I could donate. And when I did, you know, it, 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 he started crying, his wife started crying, you know, it, it was, it was awesome, and throughout the whole night, the whole night, um, he would, you know, be sitting there and just kind of staring off to space, and I'd ask him, you know, like, what are you thinking, and, and he'd just tell me he's in shock, you know, he can't, he can't, you know, believe it's true, he's nervous to believe it's true, and I don't blame him, you know, and it's just, it's been, it's been one of those things where I, like, I truly believe that me meeting him was a part of, like, my big plan. Like, you know, I'm a Christian, and I, I believe that that feeling that I got was seriously, like, God just pushing me to do this because... I don't know, because that's just what I believe, you know, and and meeting him and his family has really renewed my faith in, in following, you know, divine intervention, and I don't know, I really don't, you know, I know this is a long video, we're at 17 minutes, but I just wanted to talk about kind of the, how it went down, you know, and, and I literally just got a call, um, I, my case went in front of the, the review board and it was cleared. I just have to wait for one more test to come in, which I know will be fine. So we're doing this, you know, and I'm excited. I'm really excited. So, anyways, so that's the story of me and Jim. So, sweetest, sweetest people I've ever met in my life, hands down. So, if, um, you know, if becoming a donor interests you, you know, or, um, or even not, I mean, if, it, it means so much to people to even be a deceased organ donor, you know, if you die in, in a car accident, but you have viable organs, you're saving lives, you know, and, and I don't think people realize the impact, but I mean, like, just sitting in the transplant wing at Mayo, so many lives, you know. So if you if you are an organ donor, I mean, consider it. You know, I'm. You know, everyone can do whatever they want, obviously, but y'all don't even know. I mean, I I can. I'm blessed to say that I've seen it firsthand. What that does to somebody, and not just not just Jim, like people at Mayo. You know, I was talking to people that I was sitting around with. You know, and you know, but if you also for you know, whatever, think about being a living donor, you know, it's amazing, it's an amazing gift, you can't, you don't, you can't give stuff like this to people, you can't, it's not time, it's not money, it's, it's so much deeper than that, you know, and I'm really, really, really happy I can do it, so, anyways, that's it. <laughs> That's all I got to say. So, hope you enjoy this. If you have any more questions, hit me up. Um, I have a GoFundMe page. I don't like talking about this or asking for money. It, like, bothers me, but... I don't know. It's just one of those things where it's like, it would make my life a lot easier. Um, but if you guys can find it in your hearts to donate, um, I put a link in the bottom of the, the video. Um... Anything helps.
Uh, it's just for lost wages and, and travel and stuff like that. Um, and if you, you know, if you don't have the means to, just sharing, you know, the page would be awesome. So, anyways, I'll end here. So, I hope you guys have a wonderful day, and God bless.